Hey everyone, happy Sunday night. I hope you had a nice weekend and are ready for another new week. I know I am. I am uh, feeling rejuvenated finally. Uh, and um, I'm excited for this week to start and, and get going. And the weather is going to, it's been a little cool here. You can see I'm in a sweatshirt, um, but it's going to get nice and hot again this week. So, you know, my summer is not quite done yet, which is really good um, because I am not a fan of cold weather. I am not a fan of, of uh, the winter at all. Um, hence the reason we were supposed to move last year was that a big part of it was because I don't like cold and wanted to move to a warmer climate and uh, I'm still stuck here in Michigan. So, well, stuck in certain ways, stuck in the cold, but actually, you know, we have a good life here. We like it here. Um, so I'm really not totally complaining except for the weather. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about something I actually just got off of a call not too long ago um, with a whole bunch of people where we were discussing this. And it was a really, really, really powerful discussion talking about what it is, what are the things in our lives that have happened that sparked us to make a, some sort of change, some sort of real change. Um, and everybody has those things. And sometimes we don't even recognize them. And that's... That's really key is stepping back and learning to recognize what are those things, what are those pivotal moments in our lives when we can all of a sudden say, whoa, stop, enough is enough of how I'm living, enough is enough of what I'm doing, and I want to make a change. And then how do you take action on that change, right? I mean, that's the next step. It's not just that you want to make a change. But how do you take action on that change and how do you how do you do that and make that an ongoing thing and not just, you know, so many of us start a start and start with, you know, something. Hey, Jeannie, um, you know, start in something. Right. And we get going and we're on our roll because whatever it was, whatever, you know, we hit our rock bottom or we hit our spot. And so we get going and then we start to feel better and we start moving along. And then we sort of plateau off, right, and slip back. And um, I started talking about this a little bit last night with the idea of yo-yo dieting. And I, I promise that I'm going to talk a lot about more yo -yo, about yo-yo dieting later on in this week. Um, but this is something that's not just about dieting, right? This is about something that no matter what in our lives, what is that piece? What is that thing that clicks in? Where do you have in your life that thing that clicked in and said, Gosh, I'm done. I'm I'm enough is enough, Margaret. I was mentally abused by my son. Son, I moved to change. I'm so wow. Well, I'm sorry. That's powerful. But you know, we all have, we have those things, and I'm glad you were able to move to make a big change on that. Um, you know, and that's that's really really powerful. And I'm sure you grew so much from it, right? Um, and I'd love to hear more about that. I don't know if you want to share more about that here, or if you want to talk privately with me, um, cause I would love to, to hear more about that because these things that happen, right? We have two options when we hit that rock bottom stuff, right? We have two things that we can do. We can either let it bury us, right? And, and let it just be the end of us, right? And, and not, or we can rise above it and we can learn to thrive. And we can rise above it and say, I'm better than this. I'm worth more than this. And and move forward and grow. And when we can do that, and when we can find support around ourselves to do that, that's when everything opens up. I'm so glad to hear that you're a lot happier. I'm so glad to hear that you were able to rise above it and and move forward and that you're now happier because that's what happens when we are able to admit it and we're able to to move forward, right? And sometimes get the help that we need, right? We can't always do this on our own. Most of us can't do it on our own. Actually, I know very few people who can hit that rock bottom spot, right? And then move forward on their own. We all need some sort of help. And so for me, I don't know how many of you know my story, right? I mean, I talk about it a little bit that I, yes, I lost 75 pounds about three, you know, starting about three and a half years ago, but I was really, really at my rock bottom, right? I am someone who has struggled with weight my entire life, all kinds of things, the traumas that went on, you know, starting as a teen, the traumas that go on when you're a teenager and you're struggling with weight, it's not fun. It is a horrible place to be in. The people that make fun of you, right? The clothes don't, that don't fit right. The, the clothes that you, you know, you wear the same things over and over again because you think they make you look thinner. Um, Hannah, extreme stress motivated you to leave, leave teaching. Yeah. I mean, those, those things, it does that, it, you know, and Hannah, I think you're much happier now <laughs> from our conversations. You seem much happier now in what you're doing now. Um, 
But I remember that as a teen, right? Like, and I remember being embarrassed. I remember, you know, feeling, even if people weren't thinking things of me, it was what I was thinking of myself and being in that terrible, terrible spot and it always weighing down on me. And it went on and on. And I, you know, was a professional yo-yo dieter, which I'm going to talk about yo-yo dieting later this week, right? Because it became this cyclical thing. Like, and I was looking for the next quick fix. I was looking for that, but I was never getting myself out of that bad situation. And about three and a half years ago, I hit my rock bottom, right? I had, once again, I had lost a whole lot of weight. I had, was put in the process of putting it back on in a very quick period of time. And I was just in a miserable, terrible place, feeling horrible, right? And it wasn't even that I was just feeling horrible. I had no energy. I had three little kids one of whom has a very rare blood disorder, you know, and I was just, and I didn't feel like I could take care of them. I felt like a failure as a parent. I felt like a failure as a wife, right? I slept in my, you know, I slept with a bottle of baby aspirin next to my bed because I was so terrified of having a heart attack in the middle of the night that I slept with this bottle of baby aspirin next to my bed, right? There's heart disease that runs in my family. And that was the one thing I knew that I could do to protect myself. And about three and a half years ago, I hit that rock bottom and I said, enough is enough. I can't live like this anymore. I can't live in the fear of going to sleep that I'm not going to wake up the next morning and that, that my kids are going to come upstairs to wake me up for school and find me that way. Right. And, and it was, it, that was my rock bottom, right? That was my absolute rock bottom was what would that do to my children? Right. I felt so blessed to have these three kids. You know, my, my youngest, when he was born, I actually had major complications when he was born. They say not due to weight, but I was a yeah, hundred pounds overweight when he was born. So I can't imagine that that helped the situation, right? I had major complications when he was born. I almost didn't survive his birth. And I felt very blessed when I did survive his birth, right? I felt very blessed that here I was. I was here for a reason to raise my three kids. I had, you know, a brand new baby boy. I have, you know, a daughter with a with a very rare blood disorder, right? I believed that I was here for a reason and I wasn't taking care of myself, right? I was sleeping with a bottle of baby aspirin next to my bed in fear of a heart attack when what I needed to do was step up and into my life and take charge of my life and ask for help, right? I knew I couldn't do it on my own. I had learned that much that I couldn't do it on my own. And that was when I reached out and I reached for help and I made a huge shift and made a huge change. And it was completely life-changing for me, right? I went on to lose the weight and that was a small piece of it. But what has happened over the last three and a half years, not only did I lose the weight and not only have I been able to keep the weight off, but I have created a new life for myself, right? And with the help of every one of you, with the help of my healthy community, with the help of my coach, right? I don't do it alone with the support system that I've built for myself to create this new life. And it's not easy, right? And I'm going to say that very clearly. It's not easy. By doing this program, by becoming a coach, all those things, it didn't just like remove a piece of my brain that, that took out the stress eating and the emotional eating and all the things that I struggled with before, right? Those things are still there. They don't go away, but we can learn how to overcome them. We can learn how to be stronger than those things. We can learn how, even if we have bad days, because, you know, we all have bad days. We all have times that it's tough. Somebody actually just posted a meme where it was, um, Oh, you know, a picture of the same girl and she was facing one way and the wind was blowing in her hair and it was all gorgeous and she was facing the other way and the wind was like knocking her over, right? And we all have those days. We, st I still have those days where the wind is blowing the wrong way and knocking me over, right? But that's where I reached my support system. That's where I reached to the people that care about me that are going to help pick me up and flip me around so that the wind blows in the right direction, right? And sometimes it's harder, right? But that's what this is all about right, is finding those times when it's hard and recognizing that piece in our story, right, recognizing that chapter in our life because that's what it is, but also knowing that at any point in time we can flip the page. We can flip the page and create that next new chapter. That chapter doesn't have to go on and that chapter, and that does not have to be the end of our story. And that's what's so, so, so powerful, right? My story has a lot more chapters to go right? And where I am right now, I'm in the middle of a chapter and I'm in the middle of an awesome chapter. And I know though, that in reality, the way life works, I'm probably going to have some other rough chapters, right? But with everything I've learned, those rough chapters don't have to be as rough as they used to be. 
um, and don't have to be as rough as they could have been, right? Because we learn from each one of them and we build our circle and we build our community, right? You know, I like to call it my we. Actually, one of my one of the coaches that I who I love dearly that I work with, she actually you know introduced this concept to me and I the idea the way she said it to me and I love it, right? And in life, we need our we, right? So if you picture it as your three fingers up when you have your we, and I don't know that I can do this and hold my phone at the same time. I'm going to see if I can prop this up here. Oops, sorry about my hand there. So we have our we, right? And when we have our we, right, when we fall, there's somebody there to catch us, right? So when we create a community for ourselves, when we surround ourselves in people who are going to support us, we've got somebody there to catch us when we fall. But when life is all about a me, upside down, when we fall, there's nobody there to catch us, right? How powerful is that? That is so powerful and such a, an amazing statement. And the truth is, that's one of the things that I, you know, and, and my friend, my friend Jackie, um, who's the one who, who said that to me for the first time and introduced that concept to me, you know, probably about six months or so ago, I loved that verbiage because I had never thought about it that way. But that's exactly what was created for me three and a half years ago when I made a change, when I finally decided to accept my story and to recognize my story in my life and that I couldn't do it alone because in the past before that I had tried to do it alone I had tried to go at everything alone I was a I was one of those people that it's I got it I'm good I got it I still am like that in certain things right I go to plan something I go to do something and people say how can I help I got it I'm fine right and a lot of things I am I got it I'm fine but we can't be that way Right? We need our community. We need the people around us. We need to recognize our weaknesses and where we're struggling and 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 find that support. You, need, I, you don't have support at all. Um, well, I'm here. I'm here to be your support, Jeannie, if you want, if you want the support. I know, you know, we were messaging before. Let's you and I should talk tomorrow. We can get on a call and we can talk. Um, you know, because you do, you have support and and we will we will create that for you and help you build that because that's where I was. Um, you know, and and building building that life, right? Creating that, finding it, because there are a lot of amazing people out there that want to be support and want to help want to help one another, right? And that's that's what I love so much. That's really what I love so much about the Facebook world, um, you know, is is that I've met some of the most amazing people. I was actually messaging with, with a Facebook friend this morning, right, who she and I started messaging. It was her birthday. I wished her a happy birthday. And we started talking and talking about, you know, her goals for the year and all these kinds of things. And it was just the best conversation, right? We've never met in person. That's okay, right? You know, some people get really leery with that and, you know, get weird. But you know what? It's so nice. Some of my favorite people that I have met are people that I have met on Facebook through doing lives, through reaching out, right? Just connecting. And that's what this is about. Social media has given us such an awesome opportunity to create new relationships with people we never, ever, ever would have met. Um, you know, and that's that's so powerful. Um, Margaret, I'm rolling, scrolling back up to see what you wrote. Um, Margaret said, my 28-year-old moved back to his back to New Jersey from California when his brother got married in 2015. It was a nightmare when we when he did and we would all and he would call me stupid and a hole and tell me I'm more lazy and belittled me. Ugh, that sounds terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm glad you were out of that situation. Nobody should ever treat somebody that way and nobody ever deserves to be treated that way. And if anybody there if anybody here is being treated that way from somebody, please reach out because nobody deserves that. Right? Nobody deserves to be to be have those things said about them. Um you know, and so I, Margaret, I'm so glad that you are happier now and you have found a better place and hopefully have found a support system around you to to help you realize that he's the one with the issue, right? When somebody treats somebody else like that, it's on them. It is a reflection of who they are, not a reflection of who you are, right? If you're being treated that poorly, it's a reflection of the person who is giving those actions. And I tell my kids this all the time, right? When they say nasty things to one another, I look at them and say, that's a reflection on you and not a reflection on whoever you're speaking to, right? Because it's so important for us to realize that, right? We can't control how somebody else acts, but we can control how we respond to it, right? Right? So when somebody else is acting nasty and icky, that's on them. It's on them. And when we remember that, 
And we just can have to take a step back and say, it's on you. This isn't about me, right? And it's really powerful. I actually had something like this go on not so long ago in my life that somebody that, you know, somebody that really should have stepped in and helped with something didn't. And people said, how, you know, people would say to me, how can you, you know, not be upset over this? And I shrugged and I said, this is on that person. It's not on me. Oh, my lighting is really weird. It's like turning orange. You know, this, I said, it's on them. And I really had no grudge about it because that's really how I've learned to look at the world. I didn't always look at the world that way. But over the last three and a half years, I've learned to look at the world as it's about them. I didn't do anything, right? I didn't do anything wrong. And if I did, then I'm sorry. And I own up to that, right? But even if I did, how they choose to respond is on them. And that's what we have to, uh, and, and, and we have to, to, to find the support system that's going to support us. Um, I, Margaret, I'm so glad that you didn't end up hurting yourself and that you have gotten yourself away and in a, you are in a, definitely in a healthier place um, than you were because none of us deserve that, right? None of us deserve to be treated that way, right? We are all here. Every single one of us is here because God wants us here, right? We were put here for a reason to make an impact in this world. And we, you know, that's, and, and it's not, you know, we're here as long as we're here, as long as God's keeping us in this world, we have an impact to make a positive impact to make. He's an alcoholic and an addict. It's not an excuse, but having to deal with it is almost ended up in, you almost ended up in the psychic ward. You know what? I hope he can get his own. I hope he can get help. Right. But I'm glad if he's not, that you got away from that because that's what's key. And that's, and that recognizing that for you, that he, you know, and not letting that be an excuse, right? Not letting him walk all over you. That's, that's really, really, really important, right? And it's staying away from that until he can clean himself up. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you moved also and that you're, that you're happier um, because it's, it can be life changing, right? When you find that whatever that breaking point is, right? Whatever the breaking point is in your life, taking it and saying no more. And and sometimes that's really hard. It takes a lot of strength to do that. And sometimes we do that out of weakness. I know when I did it, it was out of weakness. I was to the point when I had to say no more, I can't live like this. I was at that breaking point. It was either I had to make a change or my, or I wasn't going to be around for longer, right? If I hadn't made a change three and a half years ago, I wouldn't be sitting here today, right? There's no way I wouldn't have survived the last three and a half years. I couldn't go on like that any longer, right? Um, you know, and it's, and it's, it's time, you know, we all have to find that time and we all have to then find that support. Jeannie, after your 39th birthday, my sister asked me to leave. My dad said nothing. And my daughter's father, recovering addict and narcissist did nothing for my birthday. I decided I'm going to love myself more. So, so the, so these garbage people can take themselves out. Yep, exactly. You know what? You have to love yourself more and you have to find people that are going to care about you right? If the people around you aren't being your support system, then it's time to find a new support system. When I do a health assessment with a, with a new client, um, one of the things that I ask about is about healthy surroundings. Who in your life is supportive of you and of what you're doing? Because that's so important. When I'm talking to somebody about getting healthy, health is not just about weight, Health is about, you know, I talk about there are six significant factors in overall health, right? Some of those are physical things, sleep, hydration, healthy motion, but it's also mindset, healthy surroundings, right? Weight management, those things, mindset and healthy surroundings, those are two out of the six things that is such an important factor because if those things are off kilter, two sixths of it being off kilter that's huge, right? It's one third, right? It's huge. And it's so important that we work on those things, right? Which is why I love, which is why I love what I do, because I'm given the skills and the tools to be able to help people with the mindset piece, right? And with the healthy surroundings and with the, you know, and, and feeling good about themselves and all that, because if we don't feel good about ourselves and if we don't feel loved and if we don't feel supported, then life is much, much harder, right? And so we have to find those people that are going to surround us with that. So I'm glad, I'm glad, Jeannie, that you're on here. Margaret, I'm glad that you're on here, right? And listening, I'm part of this. And whoever else is watching and listening that this resonates with, you know, right? We're here together. We're in this together to get healthy 
and not just it's not just about physical body it's about all of those pieces um so right so Janie you you eat healthy and exercise and it's really spirit and emotional baggage I get it I get it that's what it is for a lot of us it is a lot of us it is spiritual and emotional baggage and some people with spiritual and emotional baggage kicks us out of whack with with healthy eating and put we put on weight some people don't right but it all is the same thing you're still not in a healthy place and so we want to help you get to that healthy place um, and help talk through that and help work through that Um, so this is a conversation that I think could go on and on and on and on right there's so much to it there's so much depth I like I said I was on a call with 10 other people this evening having the same conversation for over an hour. And it was an amazing conversation because we all had our things that were our breaking point things and, and defined our stories and defined our stories or the chapter that we're in right now. It's not our full story, but the chapters that are, were our previous chapter and the chapter that we're writing now. And that's really, really powerful and important. And I would love to continue this conversation either offline, you know, off of this, or do another live where we can discuss this some more um, because it's really powerful. But, you know, I challenge you to sit down and really think through, if you haven't before, to think through what was your breaking point? Have you hit it yet, right? Some of us haven't hit it yet, right? If you had asked me three and a half years, before I hit my breaking point three and a half years ago, I don't, I hadn't, right? I hadn't gotten to that spot yet where I was ready to make a change, right? But if you have, if you're struggling with things and you haven't gotten to your breaking point, I challenge you to stop and think, what do I need to do? Where, How can I get my, not that we want it to get worse, but how can I stop this now and say this is my breaking point so that I can start to make a change and make it better in my life, right? So that's what I really want you to think about. I would love to continue this conversation with you. I am exhausted. It's almost midnight here, and so I need to get some sleep. But this is a great start to a conversation. Um, so please feel free. Reach out to me privately. We, or like I said, we can continue this in another live. Um, but I hope that this got some wheels turning because it's definitely got some wheels turning for me. Um, and we will continue to talk about this. So have a wonderful night, and we will talk soon. And shoot me a message if you want to continue talking. Good night. Bye.